Okay, welcome. This is actually the last video of the semester, um, at least on new material. This is on the Gini Index and the Lorenz Curve. This diagram that you see on the left is actually something that is provided in um, the PowerPoint, but I just thought I would explain it a little bit further here. The X values for the Lorenz curve are values that represent the percent of the population. And generally, as we go from 0 to 100 percent, it's in terms of the poorest. So for example, if I said how much wealth was controlled by the poorest 30 percent of the population, um, we could evaluate that directly and get a value from the Lorenz curve. If I said how much wealth is controlled by the um, wealthiest 25% uh, of the population, well then what we would have to think about is the wealthiest 25% of the population, we would have to actually evaluate the Lorenz curve, right, at 75%. Um, and then what we would do is we would subtract because we would want this area here all the way down. So you're going to see me go through that in just a minute. Um, before we talk about the Gini Index though, the Gini Index, um, something that's going to be very important is this line here, the line y is equal to x, which is often called that perfect distribution of wealth line, meaning, you know, if 50 percent of the population controlled 50 percent of the wealth, that would be, you know, a perfect sort of situation. Um, but that line is going to be very important because if you look here at this area that's represented by the Gini index, you can see that it's the area between two curves. Um, one of the curves being that line of perfect equality and then the other being the Lorenz curve. So I just want you to make sure that you understand what this diagram looks like when we start solving some of those problems. Over here, something that you're going to see me work with is that we're going to calculate um, the Gini index, that value. And when we calculate that Gini index value, it's going to be important um, that you understand where I'm getting these values from. So one thing it says that the Gini index value is equal to the area between the Lorenz curve and the line of perfect equality. So let's talk just for a second about how I could come up with that area in yellow. One of the things that I hope that you understand is that if I took the area under this line of perfect equality, everybody, it is always going to be 0.5. Because think about that in terms of if I had a square even, a perfect square, you know, one by one would have you know, a area of one, and I'm talking about half of it. So the area of that triangle is actually 0.5. So if I wanted to take and find the area between that line of perfect equality and the Lorenz curve, wouldn't it just be that the upper curve is that 0.5 area and then minus the value of the Lorenz curve? So that would be from zero to one of whatever my Lorenz curve is. But then I'm going to divide it by the total area below the line of perfect equality because I, it's a comparison of percentages here. So that's where I would take in again and divide everything by 0.5. So let's jump in and see how we start looking at these. So in this problem that I've given you, I have that, um, I've given you a table here, and I've done this just as review. We won't do a lot with this, but it's a good way for you to get started um, in reviewing, really, for the final. But I've asked you to fit a quadratic function to the data to determine the Lorenz curve. Okay, so we're talking about Panama. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I've done here. And what I've done here is basically the percent of the population those are my x values, or my input. The percent of wealth, that's my y values, or my um, output. And so basically, I simply just inserted a scatter plot 
a polynomial of order 2, and I came up with this model. And remember, this little thing down here, don't get too concerned about that. That's really the number 0, isn't it? So this function is going to be y is equal to 0.6847x squared plus 0.0522x. The next thing that we're going to do it's is compute the percentage of wealth the upper 30% of the population controlled. So let's take a look at what I'm going to do here in this next piece. So for the upper 30% of the population, I'm going to evaluate at 0.7 because remember what I said, when we're talking about the Lorenz curve, we know that we're going from 0 to 1 but if we want the upper 30%, that would be up here. We're going to evaluate at 0.7 first. Well, when we evaluate 0.7, that's telling us the percent of wealth controlled by the poorest 70% of the population. So that's basically saying about 37% of the wealth is controlled by the lower 70% of the population. That's not what we want. We want to take that value and subtract it from 1. And that's going to make a lot more sense. We have then that the upper 30% or the, you know, those, the highest 30% there control 62.8% of the wealth. When you go to part C, it says compute the percent of wealth the lower 60% controlled. Now this one, because it is always the lower that you can calculate directly by the Lorenz curve, we're just going to evaluate it at 0.6. Unfortunately, the lower 60% of the population only control 27.78% of the wealth. Now. As you can see with the Lorenz curve, there's really no calculus involved. The Lorenz curve is simply calculating. So you're always going to calculate the lower percent directly into the polynomial. And if you're looking for upper, you have to go through that procedure of subtracting from 1. The Gini index, however, does involve calculus. So in this next part, let's go ahead and take a look at the calculus involved with the Gini index. Okay, so with the Gini index, we are going to take and first of all, use our function that we found in part one for the Lorenz curve and we're going to make some calculations. So you can see that we're going to go from 0 to 1. That's always what we are going to be doing. When we're looking at the Gini index, that's always the calculation. The next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and see what I've got for you here. Well, this value that we're evaluating is simply the um, antiderivative of the um, Lorenz curve. So you can see I've raised it to the third power divided by 3, raised it to the second power divided by 2. When I enter that and drag it down, I simply get a 0 at 0, which would make sense. Now remember, I could go ahead and use 5 cell and simply, you know, I don't want to throw you off. It's really 5 cell again. I just have not finish that because of that zero value there. So now I want you to think about how I get the Gini index. One part of the Gini index is the calculation. So let's go back to this for just a second. So it says the area between the Lorenz curve and the line of perfect equality all divided by the total area below the line of perfect equality. So back in my uh, formula here, I could do a couple of things. One of the easiest things might be to show you the function that I'm going to set up. So I'm basically going to say is equal to, I'm going to start with parentheses. And with the parentheses, I'm going to take and subtract. I'm going to say 0.5 minus this area that I just got 
end my parentheses. And now I'm going to divide that by the area that's under the curve, or 0.5 again. And as you can see, that calculation is the calculation that you've seen me get a couple of different places, but I wanted to make sure that we talked through it together. So you're going to do the Gini index, and that's basically the very first thing that you need to calculate is the antiderivative of the Lorenz curve from 0 to 1 using fundamental theorem of calculus. And then you can see that you basically set up the area always is going to be 0.5 minus the value from fundamental theorem of calculus divided by 0.5. Now, we do want to talk about what that means. And what that means is, it says, in order for us to really understand what that value means, we need to talk about um, the Gini index in general. So the Gini index, this value, 0.491, is a comparison of the country's wealth to that of perfect equality. And the way that you want to think about this is the closer that value is to zero, the more evenly the country's, country's wealth is distributed. So Panama's Gini index is 0.4913. In the question, I said Ecuador's wealth um, I had given you was 0.395. And so the way that we interpret this is that Ecuador's wealth was more evenly distributed in 1996 as the area between the line of perfect equality and the Lorenz curve is closer to zero. And that's exactly what we want. We want that smaller, um, you know, value there. We want it to be closer to zero, and that's going to give us um, a more equal distribution of wealth. I hope that you um, can go back through this and start to understand the Lorenz curve and Gini index. Please use the file that's also in Blackboard. Um, and let me know if I can answer any questions.